know my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise God for saving me. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, you know my soul cries out, hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise Lord. Amen. We certainly thank and praise the Lord for being good to us and making ways where it seemed to be no way and continuing to open in doors that seem to be shut. Uh, I often say if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? And it's certainly of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. We got a lot of forces out there that is trying to destroy us, to kill us, and to bring us under. And sometimes we can also work against our own selves. But God is good, He's gracious, wherein He uh, stands in the gap, wherein He's a, a bridge, as we say, over troubled waters. And He puts a hedge of protection all around us, even from ourselves. So we certainly thank the Lord given us another day's journey, and we're so glad about it, amen, as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, thank God that we're in the land of the living, and also to remember those that are reading and are going through, remember uh, the Arrington uh, family, the Lofton Arrington family, also remember uh, the Plot uh, family, that the Lord will bless them and comfort them and all others that have uh, suffered. Uh, some things even in these times. Also remember uh, Minister Grady uh, is in the hospital uh, going through uh, 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 getting his uh, fissure uh, straightened out. So pray for him that the Lord will continue to bless his body. Amen. And give him complete deliverance. Uh, he's on and headed in the right direction. We thank God for that. Also to remember uh, the service on tonight is something we said it done to encourage us, to inspire our hearts, and uh, remember that we watch and pray, uh, especially as we see the day approaching and the time drawing near of the return and the coming of our Lord Jesus. Let us pray one for another uh, fervently, the Bible says, and as we uh, see the conditions of the world, that we not get discouraged, but we look up, realizing that our Redeemer is drawing nigh. And also, too, in these times, uh, let us, uh, as the Bible says, rejoice or count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Really to uh, make that a purpose in our heart and in our mind so that we don't get discouraged and fall by the wayside, but always look unto the Lord. Because that's a, a weapon of warfare, rejoicing and praising your God, especially in in the midst of trials and tribulation. All right. Is there any other prayer requests? All right. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly thank you and praise you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for blessing each and every one of us that we have come together. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every request that's been put forth before you and even unspoken requests, Lord. We ask you that you show forth your hand, show forth your glory, show forth your anointing. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you continue to build us up to encourage our hearts, that we'll cleave unto you, Lord, with a purpose in heart. Bless our Bible study on tonight in the name of Jesus. Send forth healing, send forth deliverance, send forth your comforting spirit. Father, we ask you, Lord, that you open up our understanding, grant the door of utterance, grant ears to hear, uh, the, the, the saving of our soul. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We certainly uh, want to go back over to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter uh, chapter uh, number 1. And tonight we want uh, to talk with Peter has discussed with us about a call to be holy. A call to be holy. And I want to uh, begin 
at uh, verse uh, number 13. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 13. It says, Wherefore, gird the loins of your mind, that ye be sober and hope to the end, for the grace that is brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And uh, that word there, wherefore, it, it deals with, uh, tells us for which cause, that wherefore means for which cause or which purpose. And which cause or which purpose, he's stated that in the upper verse. And the call and the purpose is he's saying that salvation is awarded us. Salvation is given unto us. Deliverance. And that word deliverance or salvation really deals with we've been delivered. If you are in Christ, you've been delivered from the power of sin. In other words, sin has no more authority over you because you've been justified or declared righteous in Jesus Christ. And uh, the effects of sin, the, uh, uh, because Christ died, he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquity. And, 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 and the Bible says, it goes on to say we were healed by his stripes. And that healing there, it deals with spirit, soul, and body from the effects of sin. He heals us from the effects of sin. Mm -hmm. There was one guy that uh, uh, he was telling me that Christ uh, healed him from alcohol. And, and uh, that, that is a, a perfect terminology because that's what he does. He heals us from our sins. He heals us from our diseases. And um, that's what deliverance means. And then he's eventually going to deliver us from the very presence of sin. So we've been delivered already from the power of sin, that sin should have no more authority over us. And we've been delivered uh, through the stripes of Jesus uh, from the effects of sin. So we should not uh, live our lives affected by our past or by our past sinful behaviors. Uh, he heals us. He delivers us. The scripture says that Jesus is anointed. He's anointed uh, to, 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 to preach deliverance. And he's anointed to heal the broken heart. He's anointed. Amen. So, so when he says here, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. He's saying, for this cause or for this reason. And that, that uh, uh, this cause and this reason, he's saying, because salvation has come unto us. We've been delivered, set free. He says, gird up then the loins of your mind. Gird up. And, that, and that's a terminology uh, of, of specifically of warfare. Gird up. Uh, be prepared. Get ready uh, for fights. Get ready for action. Get ready for duty. Uh, notice, he says, gird up then the loins of your mind. In other words, prepare your mind then uh, for action. Prepare your mind for duty. Prepare your mind for the, for the, for the, for the purpose of living holy, saved, sanctified. Uh, the scripture tells us uh, that we should, and it says here, gird up, gird up the loins of our mind. Let this mind literally be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Let uh, attain his mind. And uh, this scripture, when we're talking about uh, a call to be holy, uh, these scriptures too can, uh, when he's saying, Wherefore, uh, gird the loins of your mind. Uh, we can easily transpose this or go over to the book of Romans uh, and where it says, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, 
by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And watch it. It says, and be not conformed, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And, and the reason why he wants your mind renewed is the same reason why he says, gird up uh, so that you may prove what is that uh, good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, a child of God that has been saved, sanctified, uh, uh, set apart for God's use has to prepare himself or herself to get themselves ready for the service of the Lord. Amen? So notice what he said. He says, gird up the loins of your mind. Prepare your mind. Uh, get your heart ready. Uh, 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 transform your mind so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Notice, then he says, be sober. Be sober. And that, be, that being sober is literally saying, don't be intoxicated like you were before in this world. Uh, don't allow uh, things that uh, are in this world to influence you wherein you are intoxicated with it and, and can't walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you've been called. Tonight, uh, that's what we're dealing with. I'm called to be holy. And that calling is God's election upon us. He called us. He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light to be what? To be holy. To live a lifestyle without sin. And that calling uh, uh, was made whenever you heard the gospel preached unto you. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the calling of God that calls you into uh, salvation, calls you into deliverance. Notice, he said, be sober, be sober-minded. Amen. Don't be drunk. Make the right decisions. Don't allow uh, the world to influence you to make bad decisions. Notice, he says, be sober and hope unto the end for the grace of that is brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, he says, be sober and hope unto the end. Amen. Uh, he that began a good work in you, uh, he will perform it uh, until the day of Jesus Christ. And that end is, is, is literally going beyond the rapture. Uh, talking about when Christ shall appear again in his glory with his saints. Hallelujah. So, so, so uh, he's not just talking about this, uh, uh, how can you say it? This, 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 this uh, distant, end of this dispensation or the end of, uh, of the church age. He's talking literally the end of uh, uh, when, when Christ shall return the second time with the saints. Notice, he says, and hope to the end for the grace that is brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And that's why I'm saying uh, when Jesus comes to snatch the saints up out of this world, uh, that's, that's not the revelation of Jesus Christ. Uh, but when he returns the second time, then he will be known as the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. And, and everybody uh, that is here upon this earth uh, will know hallelujah, the, the revelation of, of, of God in Christ. Hallelujah, my God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. And, and, and we have to in, endure unto the end. Amen. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be what? Saved. My God. Just because you, you called on his name, you got delivered. Uh, but if you uh, go back and turn, make yourself a transgressor, amen, to the things that you used to do, amen, you'll lose out of your hope. 
Yeah, uh, there's, there's no scripture that says once saved, always saved. Uh, Amen. You've man. got to realize that 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 if you don't make your calling in election sure, in the book of Revelation, Jesus says, tells those churches, all those churches, I believe he told all of them. Uh, 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 my God, I lost my thought, but he told them all. Uh, basically, he that overcometh, amen, shall receive. And and why would he tell them you got to overcome? Uh, because you're still in the fight. You're still in the battle. That's why he said, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. Amen. Don't be intoxicated. Uh, hallelujah. My God. So notice, he says, uh, hope unto the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, this grace that he's talking about right here is not uh, uh, the end all grace of salvation. He's talking about when Christ returns and establishes his throne and his kingdom. Uh, you've got to walk worthy. You've got to uh, uh, continue with him until that end. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, notice what he says there. Now we're getting to uh, uh, the meat of the matter. Hallelujah. My God, I hope you're encouraged tonight uh, because you've got something uh, that, that, that's valuable, that's precious. And, and your chest and your trials uh, that come upon you, they're valuable and precious. And, and that word wherefore, uh, once again, is saying for this cause. And, and it's a continuation uh, at verse 14. For this cause, as obedient children, you know, be obedient. Amen? Uh, you cannot walk worthy of this vocation or live holy if you don't be obedient. Amen? Hallelujah. It's, uh, obedience, the Bible says, is better than sacrifice. God has called us to be obedient. And that word obedient means uh, compliance. It means submission. God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. Uh, so God is looking for you to be compliant. Compliant with what? Compliant with his holy word. Compliant with his commandments. Doing the things that represent him. You can't do the things that represent you. <laughs> but you've got to be in submission. Humble yourself beneath the mighty hand of God. Amen. To be in compliance with his will. With his, with his commands. With his orders. With his directions. So he says. So he says. Uh, 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 as obedient children. Notice how. He's using that word children uh, in the sense of uh, being dear children, not, not, not unruly children. I'm going to use a word here. I ain't cussing. Don't be bastards. Amen. He doesn't want you to be a bastard, one that, that, that is of a reprobate mind, that, that, that rejects God's commands and turns themselves away from God. God doesn't want you to do that. He wants you to submit to him. He wants you to be in compliance with him. Amen. Notice, hallelujah, as obedient children, uh, not fashioning yourselves according to the, notice, the former lusts in your ignorance. At one time, we were ignorant uh, uh, without knowledge and without Christ. That's what the word ignorance means. It means without knowledge, without, without wisdom, without understanding. At one time, we were that, but, but, but the, the, the face and the wisdom of, and the light of Jesus Christ have shone in our face, have shined on us to, to give us light. The Bible says, walk in the light as you see the light. Uh, hallelujah. And, 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 and let your light shine before men. Christ said, I come to you as light. He said, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give thee rest. He knows. He said, take my yoke upon you and do what? Learn of me. 
You got to learn about the ways of Christ so that you don't be ignorant anymore. Uh, uh, we were once darkness, but now are we light. And that word light there always equates to intelligence, uh, 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 understanding. Uh, uh, God is light, meaning that God is all wisdom, all knowledge, all understanding. And, and he said, if any man, what, lack wisdom, let him be what? Ask of God who give it to everyone liberally and does what? Abradeth not. Doesn't get upset with you. Doesn't get angry with you. He'll give you what you need if you ask. Uh, ask. Hallelujah. So, so, so he wants us to, uh, because we have been called into something that's great, because we have been called into holiness, he wants us to be obedient and notice, not fashioning ourselves according to the former lust, the former evil desires. Uh, the Bible tells us that we ought to set our affection, our desires on things above, Amen. where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. I, I can't, I can't, uh, as the scripture says, and Jesus brought out beautifully, uh, a house divided against itself cannot stand. You can't love money and love God. Amen. Hallelujah. And 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 he says, uh, what profit of a man uh, to gain this whole world if I'm lusting after this whole world and lose my soul? And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? We have to uh, guard ourselves against our our worldly evil desires. And we all have evil desires. If I, if I say I don't have evil desires of life, amen, I've got to uh, take the Holy Ghost and, and subdue them and suppress them until uh, uh, they're purged from my mind, purged from my spirit. Uh, and that's through a process of sanctification. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's through a process of not yielding my members unto unrighteousness. For whom I yield my members to obey, that's whose servant I am to whom I obey. So if I claim to be a servant of God, if, if I claim to be an obedient child, then I've got to yield myself uh, to, to, to the word of the Lord. Amen? And in the process, I've got to feel the Holy Ghost. In the process of yielding myself, to the word of God, I'm sanctifying myself uh, uh, through obedience. Hallelujah. And through that obedience to the word of God, he's cleansing me. He's purging me. Jesus said, you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. How should a young man cleanse his soul? By, uh, uh, by taking heed thereto according to the word. That's how you clean yourself up. Uh, through obedience to the word of God, by sitting under the word of God, by meditating on the word of God. Yes. Hallelujah. It's powerful. Hallelujah. It's quick. Uh, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even and dividing asunder the soul and the spirit. Now notice, it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of your heart. Hallelujah. If the word will reveal a uh, 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 lustful, evil desires. The word will reveal true heart, a true mind, a true spirit. Hallelujah. It will reveal true motives. Hallelujah, my God. It's like a mirror, uh, what James talks about. A person looking at himself in a mirror, uh, and, 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 and if you are not in tune, you straightway forget what matter of person you are. Hallelujah. You, you can't afford to do that. Hallelujah. Now notice, he says, oh, as obedient children, not fastening yourselves according to the former lust. Now, notice, it should be former. You shouldn't be doing the things that you uh, used to do. You shouldn't be going to places you used to go to. Hallelujah. You shouldn't be involved in uh, the things that you used to be involved in. Your, your mind should not be uh, geared towards or thinking like it used to think. 
Uh, you got to let your mind, uh, uh, he said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You got to have the mind of Christ. You got to have the spirit of Christ. Hallelujah. Dwelling on the inside. Notice, according to the former lust in your ignorance. We were ignorant at one time. Amen. But since we came to Christ, came to the light. Amen. He's the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And as many as received him, to them gave he what? Power to become just like him. Uh, one of the sons of God. Amen. And that's what he's done for us. He's given us power and the anointing to become his son. So, 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 in 1 Peter chapter number 1 and verse 14, it says, as obedient children, he wants us to obey him, not fashioning uh, yourselves according to the former lusts. Uh, in your ignorance. Amen? We were ignorant at one time. Hallelujah. Now we are light. And God says, walk in the light as ye see the light. Amen? And he that hath this hope in him purify <laughs> himself even as he is pure. How do you purify yourself? Through obedience to the word of God. By walking in the spirit. If walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust or the evil desires of the flesh. It's all a combination. Hallelujah. It all works together. Notice what he says there. My God. We're talking about uh, being called to holiness. Amen. He called us to holiness. Hallelujah. And, and, and because he called us to holiness, that calling, he says, make your calling an election what? Sure. Make it sure. And in other words, do the things necessary to button it down. Uh, if, I, if I had a boat and I had that boat on some water and, and I didn't want that boat to drift away, I would make sure that anchor is down. I would make sure that the boat is tied to the dock. And, and I would make sure of that by what? Doing it and then checking it, making sure it has happened. Amen? And, and how much more should we secure and make sure our salvation is, is secure in him? Doing the things that are necessary. The Bible says, let a man examine himself hallelujah, to see whether or not he or she is in the faith. Hallelujah. Don't, uh, uh, this thing is too great to miss. This thing is too great, hallelujah, to, to allow oneself to, to, to don't know. If you don't know that you're saved right now, you should get to know whether or not you're saved right now. Hallelujah. And, and, and not guess at it. Know it. Hallelujah. And that's what God wants us to be. Notice, uh, uh, Verse number 15, it says, Be but as he which has called you is what? Holy. 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 Amen. So be ye what? Holy. Holy in all manner of what? Conversation. So he says, uh, But as he which has called you is holy. The Lord called us. He's the one that called us through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. If, you, if anybody asks you, how were you called uh, into this grace, you tell them that you were called into this grace by the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what God uses to call us into this grace. And the gospel of Jesus Christ talks about his death, burial, and resurrection. Hallelujah. And his ascension and, 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 and how he has delivered us from the power of Satan. Hallelujah. Unto God. And, and that's how you were called into it. And he said, the day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. So, so uh, uh, he that has called you, he called you. Uh, uh, you didn't call yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You didn't call yourself. 
into this grace. And, and, and it wasn't by your works yeah. were you called into this grace. You didn't just uh, uh, wake up one morning and say, I'm going to go get saved. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The Lord dealt with you uh, yeah. even before you came uh, to the sanctuary, so to speak. Uh, the Holy Ghost dealt with you yeah. and gave you that mind, uh, gave you that spirit. Uh, Amen. Not uh, as, uh, 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 as God is the goodness of the Lord that leadeth thee to repentance. Yeah. Amen. God led you to repentance. It was God's calling. It was God's purpose. And and that calling uh, was. Uh, now if we want to get real deep here. That calling was literally initiated by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. The Holy Ghost dealt with your mind yeah. before anybody else. Dealt with your mind. It was the Holy Ghost that, that led you to repentance unto yeah. salvation. Yeah. Uh, but when you when you got uh, uh, around somebody that knew the gospel and preached that gospel unto you, the Holy Ghost then operated with that individual to prick your heart. Hallelujah. And when your heart was sincerely repricked, you said in your own mind, what must I do to be saved? Yes, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then, 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 just like the Ethiopian uh, 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 unit that asked uh, the, the deacon, uh, when he came across the book of Isaiah and he began to read it, said, is this talking about somebody or is he talking about himself? Uh, and he said, how can you know except some man guide you? Amen. So, so you needed somebody to guide you. <laughs> Hallelujah. We all work this together. Everybody got a part to play. Hallelujah. So, so in this process then, we see, but as he which has called you is what? Holy. holy. God originated the call. Yeah. Uh, and God is holy. holy. And that word holy there means without sin. God is without sin. Uh, he said, he that has called you is holy. Uh, notice, he said, so be ye one, holy. holy in all manner of conversation. Yes, that word conversation there means conduct, lifestyle. Yes. Amen. God wants you to live a holy lifestyle. Amen. Yes. And in order to do that, uh, you've got to take on his characteristics. Yes. That's why he gives you the Holy Ghost. Yes. The Holy Ghost yes. manifests the nature of God in you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Notice, uh, Peter said, add to your faith virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, brotherly kindness, charity. He said, if these things be in you uh, and abound, they should make you that you should never be barren nor unfruitful uh, in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, 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 and he also said in that chapter, he said uh, us that we are to have a divine nature, yeah. uh, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And that divine nature causes you to be holy. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah, my God. Notice, he said, but as he which have called you is holy, so be ye what? Holy. Holy in all manner of conversation. Yes, God wants you to be holy. Amen. Amen. And, and, and he wants you to be holy. Yeah. And if we were to turn, we ain't got to turn there, but if we were to turn to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48, if we were to do that, it would say, be therefore perfect uh, as your heavenly Father in heaven is perfect. We have to remember that God in the beginning, he said, let us make man. And he was talking about himself, Christ, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. I know a lot of other people attach the fivefold ministry in there. And if you want to, uh, I ain't going to see no problem with it. But the specific conversation was with Christ, the Holy Ghost, and the Father. And he said, let us 
make man in our image and in our likeness. And, and that's where God is saying, be holy, for I am holy. Have my image, have my likeness. And in order to do that, God had to impart some of his divine nature upon you. Amen? That's why uh, Paul was saying, because he had that divine nature in him, but he saw that his Adamic nature was trying to rise up. And that's the thing that we've always got to beat down. Uh, that's the thing that we've always got to fight against. Hallelujah. And we may say, well, Pastor, do you say we got dual natures in us? I'm going to say, yeah, you got dual nature in you. <laughs> you got a divine nature that wants to take over. Uh, and you got a you got an Adamic nature that wants to take over. Amen? And and you've got to walk in the spirit uh, to control the evil desires of your flesh. Amen? Hallelujah. And if you don't do that, uh, you'll see, just like a weed, if you don't keep your grass cut, you don't keep the weeds knocked down, they'll grow back again, and then they'll take over. Same way, if you're not walking in the spirit and you're not uh, following after the commandments of God, uh, your evil desires will root up again, spring up, uh, as the scripture says, and many be defiled and overtake you. Hallelujah. Now notice, he said, be therefore perfect. And that word perfect there means, means complete. Uh, be complete in God. Hallelujah. God knows that we're going to have some struggles. God knows that we're going to have some fights. But we should always choose that which is good. Amen. Even though I'm fighting in my flesh, even though I'm fighting in my spirit, even though I'm fighting with external uh, forces, I should always choose the good. That's being perfect. Hallelujah. That's being mature. In your walk. That's being sober in your walk with God. Notice, he said, but as, as he which have called you is holy, be holy in all manner of conversation. And, and all of your choices, all of your behavior, God wants you to exemplify his image. Be holy. Amen. That's that word conversation. If we were to look back at the original uh, uh, meaning of that word, it means intercourse. And that word intercourse means interaction. How I interact with people has to be uh, on a holy level. Hallelujah. It has to be uh, according to God's commands. That's why he said submit yourself. Uh, that's why he said obey. That's why he said uh, I got I to gotta, I gotta walk word. So, so in order to do that, uh, I got to do it in, in all matter of, of my conversation or all matter of my lifestyle. I can't say, well, uh, I, have, I have one preacher tell me that, well, what I do at the house of God, that's God's business. What I do at my house is my business. Uh, not so. Amen. God wants you to be holy. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He wants your mind to be holy. Amen. He wants your spirit to be holy. Amen. He wants your uh, uh, your talk. Well, I'm saying conversation now. I'm talking about your talk. The very speech that comes from your mouth to be holy. Amen? He wants your desires to be holy. <laughs> Hallelujah, my God. So notice, notice the end. Uh, verse number 16. Um... He says, because it is written, be ye holy for what? I am. Now, that's a powerful statement. Because when he made the statement, because it is written. Amen? He's dealing with uh, the written word of God is literally the mind of God. Uh, those of you that are holding the Bible in your hand, you're actually holding God's thoughts, God's mind in his hand, in your hand, which equates to God's plan. Amen? Uh, which equates to God's vision. 
Uh, and the Bible says, uh, without a vision, the people perish. In other words, if, if people don't have a word from the Lord, uh, they'll live any kind of way. They won't live uh, with restraint. They'll live without restraint. God's word, it restraineth us. Uh, it, it keeps us in check. God's plan uh, keeps us in check. God's thoughts keeps us in check. He says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Uh, not evil thoughts, but good thoughts. No, no, to bring you to your what? Expected in. Uh, that's why it's written. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And that's what makes this statement so powerful. If we really, if y'all connect what I'm saying, because it is God's plan, because it is God's desire, because it is God's vision uh, for you, he said, wherefore it is written, be ye what? Holy. Now, if God would not uh, 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 provide you the means and the mechanisms and the power to do this, uh, 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 with other words, God himself, he, if he didn't, uh, if you didn't have the ability to do it, he would not have said it. God provides the means. God provides the power. Yes, God provides the a way, the ability, amen, for you to accomplish this, this scripture because it is God's plan. God's plan. Amen. If, if uh, a lot of people struggle with this, with this word right here because they, they, they want to have their way. Amen. Not really submitting to God and really acknowledging the fact that God's word has said it so he'll bring it to pass and he's provided a way for us to accomplish it. And that way is through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. He was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. And the Bible says, talks about Jesus, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. And he got up out of that grave. When he got up, he got up with all power. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, and he gave that power unto us so that we can fulfill this scripture. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now notice he said, he said, because it is written, be holy. What? Brian. Brian. He said, because it is written, be holy, just like me. God is holy, isn't he? Amen. Amen. So uh, if we were created in his image and his likeness, we ought to be just like him. Amen? We ought to be just like him. Yes, sir. Uh, in all manner of conversation, yeah. all of our conduct should line up with what is written. All of our conduct should line up with what is written. Amen. If our conduct lines up with what is written, then we are holy just as he is holy. Yes, sir. Deacon Field? Now, it says we are kept by the power God. Absolutely. Now God empowers us. Yes. And, absolutely. And, and when He empowers us, how do we use that power? By being obedient, by following after the Spirit, by walking in the Spirit. That's how we use that power. But you can use it in another way if you want. Well, people that say, but that, 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 that without that, repentance. That, so that's that's, yeah. that's the, to people who use God's power as, as in other ways are not walking in his power. They, 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 they are using their own power uh, and, 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 and usurping the power and authority of God. Yeah. And they will bust hell wide open. Amen. Go ahead. So, so they would even want to even say, I never know. Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. Absolutely. Absolutely. God said, be God. And you know, God, God knoweth. He knows the way of the righteous. Huh? 
and the way of the ungodly, it shall what? Perish. perish. Amen. And that word perish means what? Destroyed. All right. Perish means to be eternally separated from God. That's what the word perish means. It doesn't mean die. It means to be eternally separated from God. Amen? And in a sense, you could say destroy, but it literally means to be eternally separated from God. Those that don't keep God's commands and walk in God's ways will perish. Now, God's solution to a person perishing is that they believe on Jesus. God so loved the world that he did what? Gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not what? Perish. It's not God's will. It's not his desire that any man should perish. It's God's will. It's God's desire because it is written. It's God's plan that all be holy. Amen? Um, just like he's holy. Go ahead. Also, um, Bishop, God wants us to, you know what you're saying, to imitate him. To be Absolutely. Like him, to be like him. Absolutely. Talk like him. Talk like him. In Jesus' wilderness, the word is so strong and powerful, he spoke the word. Yeah. He can tell us to speak the word. Speak it. Speak it. In prayer. Speak it. In prayer. And, 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 and declare. Then declare. Speak the word. Yeah. Let it not depart from your mouth. And that word, let it not depart from your mouth, means don't cease to speak it. Don't cease to talk about it. Don't cease to meditate on it. Because that's what transforms you. That's what transforms your mind. Notice, God's, God's, God's word is God's thoughts. That's why God wants his word in your mind so that his thoughts can become your thoughts. That's why he gave you the Bible to study. Amen? Uh, uh, so that his thoughts can get in you. Amen? So that you will think soberly according to the scriptures. That's how you be holy just as he is holy. Uh, by your conduct and your behavior. But, but that, that conduct and behavior has to be in your mind. How does it get in your mind? Uh, through study of his word. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And, and, if, and if anybody doesn't have his word in studying his word, you don't have his mind. You won't be able to be holy. And I'm going to go as far as say this. Hallelujah, my God. People who struggle with this have, have not really uh, studied this so that it can enter into their mind. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And, and uh, 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 God reveals His Word to those that seek after His Word yeah. or seek or search the Scriptures. Hallelujah. And, and, and knowledge and wisdom comes through searching the Scriptures. And, 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 and people who don't receive uh, 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 the understanding of being holy. They wrestle with the scriptures unto their own destruction. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now notice, notice. Let's go over to the book of, of Leviticus. Uh, uh, chapter uh, 11 and verse 44. Thank you. We're talking about called to be holy. God has called us. conduct, our behavior, and the way to, to be holy, you first have to have his mind. And the way to get his mind, you've got to get that word in you. Those are the thoughts of God. All right? In, in the book of uh, Leviticus, chapter number 11, in verse 44, it says, For I am what? The Lord your God. I'm the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore, notice what he said, sanctify yourselves. <laughs> uh, uh, separate yourself from the world. Uh, you can't be holy 
Uh, though we're in the world, we're not of the world. He's saying, sanctify yourself from the world. You have a part to play. Put away uncleanliness. Put away ungodliness. Put away the unclean thing. Let me say this. Let me say this. That, that Israel, though God had brought them out of Egypt, what, what continually plagued them were, was they also had people that came out with them that were not all Israelites. And those people that came out with them that were not all Israelites, they influenced them. They influenced them. You've got to watch out for people that are trying to influence you to do evil. God called you out, but, but, but there's some attachments that come out with you that are always trying to bring you back into captivity. Yes. And you've got to watch out for that. So, so that's what was going on with the children of Israel. That's why you see that they were uh, trying to serve God and then they served evil spirits. They served devils. Why? Because there were some people that came out with them that were not uh, totally Israelites that attacked themselves to them that brought along their ways to influence them. You've got to watch out for evil influences. Now notice, notice, he said, For I am the Lord your God, ye shall therefore sanctify yourself. That means get rid of all ungodly attachments. Yes. All uh, our worldly ways. Hallelujah. Amen. He, he means that. You got to get rid of that. Get rid of all ungodly ways, all worldly attachments, all ungodly way of thinking, all ungodly way of doing things, yes. behaviors. Amen. Notice, he said, ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, ye shall be what? Holy. 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 You shall be what? Holy. holy for, and he gives the reason, for I am holy. Yes. Because we represent God. Mm -hmm. We are God's ambassadors upon this earth. Mm -hmm. and, and, and people have never seen God. But, but when they look on us, they should see him. Yes, Lord. Amen? They should see him because he is, is, is with us. <laughs> yes, Lord. Hallelujah. When, when, I, when I speak, it should be a manifestation of God. Yes, sir. Uh, when, when I do things, it should be a manifestation of God. What I wear, it should be a manifestation of God. Uh, my, my speech should betray me. Amen? Uh, 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 Jesus was so emphatic uh, or so serious about it when, when he told his disciples that he was going to go away and, and, and Thomas uh, uh, he was like well uh, asked Jesus a question about I won't believe it. Uh, uh, show us the Father. And Jesus said, Have I not so long been with you that you have not seen the Father? Huh? When you've seen me, you what? See, he was fulfilling the scripture. Amen? And we should say the same thing. People should say the same thing about us. Huh? That when you see me, you see the Father. Yes. Uh, we were created in His image <laughs> and His likeness. You see the Father's attributes in me. I should see the Father's attributes in you. Amen? Amen, anyhow. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. <laughs> That's what's written. Amen? Hallelujah. 
And that's what our calling is. God has called us to be holy. Amen? Holy in all manner of conduct or conversation. All manner. Notice. He says, Neither shall ye defile yourself with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. In other words, don't get involved with ungodly stuff. Amen? You can't, you can't uh, be delivered from the world and, and go back to the world and make yourself a transgressor. Amen? Hallelujah. My God. God has called you out of that. Amen? Thank you. To represent him. Now notice also, go over to the book of uh, uh, Micah. Micah chapter number four. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Y'all with me? Amen. Micah chapter number four. We have it. Say amen. amen. It says, Micah chapter number four, verse number five. It says, for all people will walk every one in the name of his God and will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Now, I know this Old Testament scripture and it says, for all people will walk. That word walk means your daily activity, your lifestyle. He says that for all people will walk everyone in the name of his God. Meaning that you represent whichever God you serve. And you, you represent that God's name. If you walk according to this world, you're representing the God of this world which is Satan. Amen. Amen? Amen? You're representing his name. If you walk in holiness and righteousness, then uh, you are walking and representing the name of the Lord, our God. And in the, in the New Testament, the name that our, uh, our God was given if you allow me to say it this way, or the name is Jesus. That was the name that was given. Amen? And we walk in that name. In other words, I, I represent that name. I live my life in that name. Yes. Huh? Anything that I do in word and deed, I got to do it all in the name. Amen? And then that name is what? Jesus. Jesus. Yes. We're representatives. We're called to holiness. Amen. We're ambassadors of Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that's why I said, be holy, for I am holy. We've been called. He said, make your calling in election, but sure, make it sure. Amen. Notice this. He said, for all people will walk everyone in the name of his God. Everybody. Amen? And, 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 and the God that you serve is manifest by your actions, by your deeds. Amen? Amen. Uh, if you serve the true and living God, you come out from among evils and wickedness. And you do that which is righteous and holy. Amen? Because God is righteous. God is holy. Amen? If you are living a lifestyle of, of sin, you're living according to your God, which is the devil. Yes. He's evil. He's wicked. Yes. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. There's darkness. And then there's light. 
Jesus said, I am the true vine. If there's a true vine, there's a false vine. Huh? <laughs> if there's light, there's always a, a contradiction. There's darkness. If there's good, there's always evil. God said, told in the book of Daniel, he says, I want you to do great exploits. And, and that word great exploits means I want you to always choose the good and refuse the evil. Yeah. God wants us to do that. Because why? He's holy. And we are his image and his likeness. Huh? We are, we are, we are, we are to be like him. All right, let's go back over to 1 Peter. Thank you, Jesus. I don't want to be eternally separated from God. I want to be holy. So in order to be holy, then I got to sanctify myself. God doesn't, in, in this respect, God doesn't sanctify you in this respect. God doesn't make you put away evil. He gives you a desire to put away evil. But, but you have choice. God doesn't take away your choice. That's why he says, sanctify yourself. Meaning, put away the unclean thing. We got a, 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 a lot of uncleanliness around us. And, and in order for me to be holy, I got to put away uncleanliness and ungodliness. And that starts, that starts in your heart. That starts in your mind. Yes. That starts by getting the vision and the revelation of Jesus Christ. Take a feel? The only thing that's going to clean you up is the word. You yes. You go through, like you said, life around darkness and dirt. Yes. And, and without the word, you're just going to get more filthy. Absolutely. Jesus said you're clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Amen. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to the word. Absolutely. All right. Now notice, verse 17. It says, And if ye call on the Father who without respect of person judges according to every man's work, lifestyle. Pass the time of your sojourning here in what? Fear. That means reverence of God. I got to reverence God. A lot of people don't obey God's word because they don't reverence God. They don't reverence his word. In other words, to reverence God's word means that 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 you realize that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. To reverence God's word means that you lean in, you study, you try. Your first reaction is, what does saith the Lord? Because I know that I don't want to displease him. I don't want to, I don't want him to be angry with me. Uh, uh, I don't want him to, to cast me away. So, so you walk in that reverence of the word of God. I want to hear from the Lord. It means so much. I want to hear from the Lord. Notice. Uh, he says, if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons judges according to every man's what? Work. God judges you according to your deeds, your actions. Amen? What you do. So therefore, in order for your deeds and your actions to be correct, you've got to reverence him. There's a lot of things people want to do, but don't do because they know the consequences of God. I'm sure you didn't do or say something because you didn't want God to get you. Amen. Not that you didn't want to do it, Amen. but because you realize that there's a consequence to it. Yes. Mm. 
So, verse 18 says, For as much as ye have, ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things. We know that we weren't redeemed by the blood of bulls and heifers and goats, turtle doves. <laughs> uh, those are corruptible. Amen. Thank you, Lord. As, as silver and gold, we, you didn't pop, you didn't buy your salvation, purchase it with, with, with money. Amen. Uh, from your vain conversation received by the traditions of fathers. Amen. Read that verse again. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by traditions from your fathers. Now, what, what he's saying is, is that your life before you came to Christ was vain. And that word vain there means empty, without purpose. Yes. You could, you could scale Mount Everest. The, uh, uh, how can you say it? You can find the cure for cancer and not be saved. And your life would be vain. It would be empty. Why? Because God called you to be saved. Yes. That's the first thing. Amen. You can be president of the United States and, and, and run the country uh, 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 fit as a fiddle. But if you don't get saved, that's vain. That's what he's saying. Vain conversation. And uh, uh, what matters to God is that you line up with his will. Yes. And his will is all be saved. Anything other than that is vain. It's empty. It's without purpose. Amen. Ain't that something? Amen. So he says, for as much as ye were not redeemed, because notice he's talking about redemption, salvation, with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation, your empty lifestyle. And, and, and literally, what these people did, uh, they literally served idol gods. They worshiped idol gods. Anytime uh, you break God's commandment, thou shalt not have any other god before me, thou, your lifestyle is vain. Anything that you put before God, uh, that, 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 that is not the will of God is vain. It's empty. That's what he's talking about. Thank you, Jesus. You can't, you can't put something that you think is important <laughs> before God. It's empty. It's vain. Hallelujah. You know, I was thinking that um, the Constitution is good, but right now it's at a reflection point because it's corruption. So, so oh my God, is it corrupt? Well, let me say this. I'm going to stop you just for a minute. Uh, the Constitution itself, well, I can't say it like that. I want to say the Constitution itself is not corrupt, but it's corrupt because man wrote it. But, but, but uh, the intent of it, uh, man is defiling it. And, it, and, and it's, 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 it's bad. Go ahead. Yeah, perverted. I like that. Good. I'm getting excited when we're saying perverted. And, and anything, like I said, if we had to pay for our salvation, you know, they would just keep going up on the prices. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 uh, God is saying that you weren't redeemed by corruptible stuff. But through the precious blood of Jesus. All right, read. Verse 19. But we were but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without what? Spot. So that's how our redemption takes place. That's the price that was paid for us, our salvation. The holy blood of Jesus. Notice, verse 20. 
verse 20. What does he say? Who verily was ordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Amen. Now Jesus, he pre-existed with the Father. And he says, who verily was foreordained before when? Foundation of the world. For the foundation of the world. In other words, God foreknew. Amen. And those he foreknew, he called. And those whom he called, the Bible says he justified. And those who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, justified, he glorified. That's God's plan. And, and his foreknowledge and his plan is not just for a select few. It's for everybody. God is no respecter of person. Amen? Now, only those that are going to receive him. Now, when the scripture says, those that receive him, meaning this, that they receive his truth. They receive his word. You can sit in the Bible class and hear it and not receive it. Huh? 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 Yeah. You can be exposed to it. You can, you can live with it. <laughs> Wake up in the morning with it. Huh? And not receive it. Huh? And notice. And, and the, the proof that you receive it is that you believe it. Uh, and the proof that you believe it, you live it. Uh, yes, sir. Amen. It all connects. Uh, and he says, as many as received him, to them gave he what? Power. Power. That, that means the authority and ability to become, notice that word, become the sons of God. That word become means that you go through the process of sanctification. Putting off and putting on. Laying aside. It's a process to become the sons of God. Now, when he talks about to them gave he power, means that he, he literally, uh, uh, when Adam sold us out and we became disconnected with God. And the devil had his way with us. And when Christ came and died on the cross, he literally took back the position and authority that Adam left. Amen? Gave unto the devil. And, and, and Jesus, he literally restores us in our rightful position. So if any man be in Christ, that's why the Bible says it's a new creature. Because Christ is the right position. That's why we are in his body. That's why we say in him we live. In him we move and have our being. That's why Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Uh, nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ does what? Living in me. That's why I can say I can do all things. Through Christ, that what? Strengthens me. That's why I said, be strong in the Lord. Not, don't be strong in your own self, but be strong in the Lord. And in the power of what? His might. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Positional change. When you get into Christ. Yes. Positional change. When you get into Christ. Paul said it this way, if you read the book of Ephesians, we are seated together with him huh, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yes. Seated far above principalities and powers. Huh? You got to know what kind of authority you have. Huh? Know who you are. Huh? Hallelujah. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, he says here, what verse we leave off of? 19, thank you. But we, but with the precious blood of Jesus as a lamb without spot 
without blemish or spot, meaning that Jesus was a perfect sacrifice, holy, hallelujah, for barely, oh, that's the verse we left off, 20, who barely was foreordained, when, before the foundation of the world, huh? uh, Jesus said, Father, if you prepare me a body, I'll go down and redeem it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right? No. But was made manifest, but was manifest or revealed in, in these last times for you. Amen? And he was literally revealed on the day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost, he was made known, his actions and his deeds. That's why the doors of the church were open. That's why God had all manner of people from every nation under heaven at that time there. Hallelujah. So he could reveal his son. And they heard a, a sound from heaven coming down as a mighty rushing wind. Yes, it filled all the house. Mm -hmm. Amen. And they, they all got the Holy Ghost. And then Peter, he, he, he made the call. He preached the gospel. Amen. And then they said, men and brethren, what shall we do to be saved? Jesus. Peter first told them that, that it was through your wicked hands whom, whom you wanted to kill the Christ. But it was God's predetermined counsel. Amen. Uh, his foreknowledge. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. Getting excited. But, but notice this. Verse 21. What does it say? Who by them you believe in God. Now, through Christ, we believe in God. It's important for us to believe in Him. Yes. And, and literally what that word believe means is to trust His word. Yes, Lord. If you don't trust what He says, then you don't believe. And the proof of your believing or trusting is your obedience. You gotta trust truth. You gotta, that's why I said, walk in truth. If you say you believe it, you gotta walk in it. All right? Notice this. See or read? Who by them you believe in God that raised them up from the dead mm -hmm. and gave them glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Amen. That your faith and hope might be where? In God. In God. Why? Because it was God's plan. It was God's foreknowledge. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. God so loved the world that he gave. Amen. Hallelujah. And who raised them up from the dead? God raised them up from the dead. And who gave them glory? God gave them glory. Hallelujah. He said, Father, glorify me with the glory that I had with thee before the world uh, began. There's another place Jesus, he made mention. He said, no man taking my life. I give it. I lay it down. Amen. He did it willingly for us. Do you feel it? You know, I was thinking after Cain killed Abel, you know, it wasn't until Seth was born, it said right. men began to call upon the name of right. the Lord. Right, right. That lineage had been continued. Yeah. I it like it. Say, it say with Christ. Yeah. Right. yeah absolutely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said he won't forsake us. He won't leave us. Amen? Hallelujah. So he was showing forth his foreknowledge, his power. Thank you, Jesus. All right? My God. All right, verse uh, 22. Read. See, ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit and to the unfeigned love of the brethren. Now, that, 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 that verse 22, the A part of that is literally giving you a, a working definition of sanctification. Sanctification is the process of, of purifying your soul, 
Your flesh won't make it into heaven. Your soul will if you purify it. How do you purify it or sanctify it? In obeying the truth through the Spirit. That's the definition of sanctification. Anybody ask you what's the definition of sanctification? You can tell them that. See, you have purified your soul in obeying the truth through the spirit and unfeigned love of the brethren. Meaning, your love for the brethren, uh, for the saints, is, is not tainted. It's, it's, it's not evil. It's not uh, it's, 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 it's without dissimulation. It's not doesn't have any partiality. See that ye love one another with what? With a pure, pure heart. How? Fervent. See that you love one another. That's how you know that you pass from darkness to light. From the love that you show one to another. And that word fervently there means intently. Scott, your, your love for the brethren has to be intent, intentional. All right, verse 23, what's it say? Being born again, not a corruptible seed. Now, notice, born again, meaning that the first time we came to this earth, we was, we was corrupted. We came by, <laughs> we came by the will of our parents. Amen? Corruption. That Adamic nation was in us. And it was the seed of your father that was put in you, that corrupted you. How do you get uncorrupt? You need the seed of your heavenly father, which is the word of God, to be in you and to abide in you. All right, read it. For all flesh is as grass. Uh-huh. And all the glory of a man as the flower of the grass. Uh-huh. The grass withers. And the flower there falleth away. Now, you would think in your mind, like, wow, you're talking about all this eternal life? You're talking about all this holiness? And now you're talking about uh, the grass with it and faith with it? Uh, he's making a reference to the point where we're going to die if we keep on living. You've got a choice. Where are you going to spend eternity? This flesh is going to die. But your soul has a place. Where is it going to spend eternity? We're spirit, soul, and body. Where's our soul going to spend eternity? Our spirit, human spirit, is going to go back to heaven. Human spirit that makes you human. Your body is going to go back to the earth, the dust. The corruptible won't inherit in corruption. The mortal won't inherit immortality. But where is your soul going to be? That's the determination that, that's, that rests in our hand. All right? Verse 25. But the word of the Lord endured forever. Now, if you become God's word, you yourself will endure forever. Because the word is eternal. And this is the word by which the gospel, God's invitation, is preached unto you. All right, we're going to close it up right there. Any questions on our Bible study? I thank God for you.
All right. At the bottom. Which I get it. God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. God is great in my soul. 